great to see so many cousins out there. Um, I'm Karen Paradise Baranowski, and I have chosen tonight to talk about my great-great-grandmother, Helen Condy. She's someone who, as I have gotten to know about her over the years, I have grown to gain a lot of respect for her and really looked up to her in all of the accomplishments that she had throughout her life. Helen Condy Thackeray was born the 24th of July, 1837 in Clackman in Scotland. She was the fourth of 12 children of Thomas Condy and Helen Sharp. Helen lived her childhood in Scotland and was baptized a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints at the age of 11. Her father and three siblings were baptized that same year. Her mother had joined the church a year before. That same year, at the Towards the end of the year of 1848, her family left Scotland and began their journey to America, sailing on the ship Zetland, leaving from Liverpool and arriving in New Orleans after a 64-day journey on the sea. Her family then moved to Grove Diggins, about seven miles from St. Louis, Missouri, where there, were, there was a mine, and several of their acquaintances from Scotland had settled there and had encouraged them to move there with them because there was work that they could do. Helen's father and brother worked in the mine at Grove Diggins, where the family lived for almost a year. Unfortunately, Grove Diggins was a very unhealthy place, and Helen's father was anxious to leave. Her brother, Robert, was born and died there, as well as her sister, Jean, almost three years old, also died. Helen's parents also became very sick, and the family was very concerned about them. The family left as soon as they could and went by steamer to St. Joseph, Missouri. Helen's mother, while they were on that steamer, um, had a miscarriage and was too ill to walk off of the boat and had to be carried off the boat. So the family stayed there in St. Joseph until their mother was better and they could then continued on to Council Bluffs where they lived for two years. <laughs> Helen's family left for Salt Lake for the Salt Lake Valley on the 7th of June, 1852, in the Thomas C.D. Howell Company. However, Helen, at the age of 14, was left behind to come with another family. She came with Joseph Russell, who was also from Clackmannon, although he had moved from Clackmannon many years prior to when the gospel came there. Um, he was a shipbuilder up in New Brunswick, Canada, and had joined the church up there. Because he was a more wealthy uh, member of the church, he was bringing machinery for the first Utah Sugar Factory. So on their journey, Helen's responsibilities would be to help Sister Agnes Russell and her invalid 27-year-old son who had consumption. He ended up dying a month after they arrived here in the valley. The Russell family um, started out with the Harmon Cutler Company but they kind of broke off. About 20 of the wagons got ahead of the rest of the company, and the rest of the Cutler Company never did catch up with them. So they kind of had their own little uh, company of 20 wagons going. Of that 20 wagons, about one-third of them belonged to uh, this Joseph Russell's group with the machinery. Helen was only about 20 days behind the rest of her family as they crossed the plains. And she was able to ride pretty much all of the way, had good health and sufficient provisions during their journey. Helen lived with her family, um, as was stated on, in the fourth ward in, here in Salt Lake City for a couple of years before she married her husband, George Thackeray. She was 18 years old when they got married on the 12th of May, 1855 in the endowment house. George Thackeray and Helen's brother, Gibson Condy, had been engaged in making adobe bricks for the barracks of Johnston Army. George was from York, England, and was the only member of his family to join the church and come to America. George and Helen began their lives together, living in a little adobe house in Salt Lake City for 10 years, where their first four children were born. In September of 1863, they were called to go and settle sections on the Weaver River. They settled by Lost Creek, later called Croydon. Helen's children were ages seven, five, three, and six months old. I have a five-year-old, a three-year-old, and a nine-month-old. Very similar, except for that seven-year-old. And I'll tell you, I would not want to have been in her position to have to go and settle a wilderness area right before winter is coming, in the cold, where all they had was a dugout in the mountain to live. 
initially. Um, she was a great woman of faith to have the faith to know that things would work out okay even with that young family that she had so many responsibilities for. They lived in the dugout until logs were cut and hauled for a one-room house with a straw floor and a dirt roof over tree bins. It was so crudely built that they put cowhide on the roof to keep the mud dry so it wouldn't leak through and wet things. Helen worked with an umbrella on her head. The families had little meat, but were healthy on grains, pigweeds, needles, sega lily bulbs, and many other greens. During the next seven years, Helen gave birth to three more children, but also had to bury her 17-month-old son, Joseph. He was her only son, her only child, not to live to adulthood. The church in Croydon was first organized as a branch about a month after they settled there. On the 14th of October, 1873, several years after being there, Croydon's first Relief Society was organized. At the age of 36, with six children at home ranging in ages from 3 to 17, Helen was called as the president of the Relief Society, with 25 members of the Relief Society who would meet in her room, in her home, for over a year until a church could be built in 1875. The Croydon Ward wasn't organized until July 11, 1877. In 1874, Helen and George Thackeray gathered rocks and built a house of rock which had a store in the front. Helen had three more children over the next six years to make a total of ten children. At the age of 50, Helen studied medicine and obstetrics with a Dr. Kohler in Morgan. She became the doctor and midwife for Croydon and the surrounding communities and delivered many babies over the next 20 years. Utah passed a law in 1892 that required midwives to pass an exam and become licensed as obstetricians, which Helen did, receiving her doctor's certificate to practice obstetrics within the territory of Utah in April of 1893. Helen became widowed at the age of 53 when her husband died on the 25th of March, 1890 from influenza. She still had several children living at home that needed her care. In 1905, after 33 years of service as the Relief Society president, she was finally released. <laughs> you know, being in the Relief Society presidency with little kids, I cannot imagine 33 years of service. To go through raising her children during that time, becoming a widow, learning to become a doctor, this is one amazing woman. She when she was released, she moved from the Rock House in Croydon to Salt Lake City to live with her two daughters who had never married. Um, and while she was here in Salt Lake, she worked for many years as a worker in the Salt Lake Temple. Helena outlived all but two of her siblings. She died November 8, 1929 at the age of 86 and was taken back to Croydon to be buried next to her husband. Helen had many talents and was a wonderful cook and seamstress. In 1885, Helen Thackeray, as Relief Society President, cautioned the sisters by saying, We are living in trying times. She exhorted the sisters to do their duties and said they were a blessed people, for the destroyer had not been in their midst for a long time. While in prosperity and peace, we should serve God and encourage our daughters not to follow the pride and fashion of the world. Still very good advice today. Helen lived her life giving service to her family and her church. She showed great faith, strength, determination, and fortitude, and is an example to us all. Thank you, Helen, for providing us with such a rich heritage. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.